My name is Guy Eames and I'm going to talk about sustainable construction, green building and energy efficiency. Green building and energy efficiency, the road to a sustainable future. You've probably heard of the 17 sustainable development goals that the United Nations uh, have set and you can imagine um, the, the routes that we're going to, uh, the future that we're all hoping for with these goals. Um, be better healthy environments, um, happy, happy livelihoods, uh, open opportunities, uh, etc. Uh, so that the world's resources can be used in a more effective way uh, for human happiness. Now these goals are closely connected with the goals of, of green building and if we're looking forward for the next 20, 50, 70 uh, years there's a very close correlation between those goals and creating a more comfortable, uh, better environment for us to all live in. If we focus on three of these uh, benefits of, of, of green building, uh, the first one is creating more comfortable and efficient microclimate, so space within, uh, within a, a building. Um, the reason why that's so important is because that affects our health, it affects um, our productivity and our ability to be able to either uh, work or uh, relax or play or, or whatever we want to, to, to do. Uh, so the first one is creating this better microclimate. Um, the second benefit of green building is minimizing the negative effects on the environment, so the environmental footprint. Um, and as you probably know, in, in the world, uh, the, the, the planet at the moment is uh, losing a lot of its biodiversity. We've lost a lot of the natural resources, which, uh, which we even had a few, few years ago. Um, so uh, this is a very important goal, uh, to create buildings which use a lot less uh, resources. And then the third benefit uh, which we're going to be looking at in more detail is the ability to adapt and to mitigate uh, climate change because climate change is uh, one of the biggest dangers to mankind at this moment and the ability to create resilient cities or environments uh, which um, are not affected in, in a negative way by this climate change is really important. So we're going to look now at these three elements in more detail. First of all, microclimate, uh, the heart of, of green buildings. So people today spend around 90% of their time indoors, can you believe it? So uh, we're either at home or we're at our workplace or we're in a gym or in a hospital or in a restaurant or wherever we are. Uh, people spend around 90% of their time indoors. So the interior microclimate is very important for a person and their ability, their, their health and uh, the, the way that they feel and their ability to, 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 to do things, to understand things, to, to, to learn, uh, to communicate, uh, to solve, solve problems. And within this microclimate, uh, green building has four aspects. Uh, the first one is thermal comfort, so it's having an environment around us which is uh, a, a good, good temperature, usually that's between 21 and 25 uh, degrees, uh, but it can depend on a lot of uh, factors. Um, I'm sure we've all been in rooms or spaces which are very cold and we find it difficult to concentrate, or in very warm places where it's also very hard to, to concentrate. Um, air quality generally is, is incredibly important. It's one of these topics which people don't think about. Uh, but you could say that bad air is like a, a, an invisible, uh, toxic uh, sort of poison which uh, gradually uh, makes us ill and stops us uh, being able to communicate properly and to think properly. Uh, so clean air is, 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 is very important, uh, both outside but also inside. You'd be, most people would be surprised to know that the air quality outside is usually much better than, than inside. Um, acoustic comfort, I'm sure we've all been in spaces where there have been a lot of distracting noises, either as from, the, from the air conditioner or outside from the traffic or people talking, uh, which affects your ability to, to, to concentrate. Uh, finally, uh, in, in the indoor uh, climate, uh, ergonomics is particularly important. Uh, today, buildings are being built uh, where there are really amazing majestic staircases, so people have to walk around and that way uh, they 
uh, heart rates a little bit faster and they're breathing better and uh, moving is really healthy uh, for, for people. Um, we've become a society where people are just sitting in one position, working on the computer, and that's, that's particularly bad uh, for legs and for your concentration. So green buildings, they have really cool, really high quality interior environments. Uh, secondly, as I mentioned, um, green building is all about minimizing negative environmental effects. Now, first of all, this can be seen through the life, life cycle of a building. Most buildings are um, planned to last between 50 and 75 years. Uh, some are modestly uh, last much longer than that. And, and if we look at the environmental effects of the building, um, we'd be actually quite, you'd be quite shocked. Um, first of all, 40% of all the energy um, that we, we use as a society is used within buildings and um, a huge amount of materials are used for constructing the building, which means um, through their life cycle, through the, the fact that they're usually dug up out of the ground, processed, and then transported and then installed, can have a huge environmental effect. And during the actual operation period of the building, it's usually transports for people coming to the building and energy which is used and the, the knock-on effects of that, that energy, um, if it's from Coal, for example, would be producing lots of um, not just greenhouse gases but also uh, pollution. If it's if it's gas, it'll also be greenhouse gases. Um, then the demolition phase, the the, the same. Uh, there are a lot of um, environmental hazards and and, uh, and effects. So it's possible to build buildings which, throughout their whole life cycle, uh, actually have a much smaller negative uh, impact. And from an economics point of view, people often say, yes, but green buildings are much more expensive. And this is true. There usually are some extra expenses during the construction phase and even through the design phase. But in reality, over 75% of the costs of the building through its life cycle are related to service and energy. And green buildings can reduce this cost by 50%, in some cases, even, even more than that. So uh, if we look at the adaptation and mitigation to climate change, uh, climate change is a major issue. Um, uh, most companies and people are concerned about climate change. Uh, it could uh, even have um, uh, the effects of, of our, our society, our civilization uh, uh, coming to an end. So uh, it's very important that buildings um, both adapt to the new climate and also that they reduce the uh, greenhouse gases and amount of energy, which is also quite, uh, quite expensive. So here are three aspects. The first one is global heating. I'm sure we've all been in situations where in the summertime, the temperature goes up to 30 degrees, 35 degrees, even 40 degrees or even higher than that. Uh, and this global heating uh, and often the uh, effects, the heat island effect in, in, within a city uh, can mean uh, that people have problems with their health, um, even in some cases they uh, lose consciousness or even it can even be fatal. Things like um, green roofs, uh, shading on buildings um, can have a huge effect on, on countering this, this uh, global, global heating within the buildings so it can keep the temperatures down by several, several degrees by designing the building differently. Uh, also Extreme climatic events, um, flooding particularly, has been a problem in many cities around the world. And this can be counteracted using green building uh, solutions, um, using sustainable urban drainage systems, uh, as we can see here on, on the pictures, designing the buildings so that all that rainfall uh, can basically be collected and will gradually disperse instead of flooding, flooding the, the, the streets. Um, finally, for uh, climate change, um, the amount of energy used in the building is, is, is critical and as I said earlier, green buildings can use up to, on average actually, 30-40% less, less energy, less CO2 uh, emissions. In some cases they can even use less, fit, less even 100% less, they can be completely autonomous uh, buildings. So we move on now to um, resource efficiency. There's a lot of talk about energy efficiency and energy efficiency is very important. Energy is one of the main resources that we as a civilization are using, uh, but other resources are directly affected uh, by uh, the type of buildings that, that we, we, we build and we, we use. Um, 
it's, that's the water consumption, uh, the amount of land that the buildings uh, use, the, the, the footprints, uh, the amount of time it takes to build a building, the amount of labor that goes into that, and materials and their, their uh, weight. And we can see here that uh, resource efficiency and, and buildings are so closely related. Uh, it's possible to build buildings which use minimal amount of uh, re resources. As of course people would uh, remember hundreds of years ago, buildings uh, could be built, very basic buildings with just local materials. Um, today, most buildings use huge amounts of um, all, all these resources which have been mentioned. Green buildings allow uh, reduction in this. So for example, uh, better windows um, mean that the heat doesn't escape from buildings um, into, into the cold in winter, which can reduce the amount of energy used. Um, prefabricated buildings, for example, can be constructed within a matter of days or weeks uh, rather than years, uh, saving time and saving money, which is also invested in the building during the construction phase. Um, other resources like water, we can see buildings can use 50% less water if they have little sensors on the, on, on the taps. So, like, we've all, all, all used these, we've all seen these. Um, and even at the final stage of the building's life, um, when they're demolished, um, the materials can be, can be reused um, if, if, that's the, if that's the plan, uh, which can save huge amounts of, res of resources and lead to a so-called cyclical uh, e economy. So let's look at what the, the barriers are. There are certainly lots of myths about why green building is very expensive, why it's very difficult, um, why it's impractical, uh, etc. All of these myths in different countries are simply myths. They all have rational uh, reasons why actually they're, they're, they're not true. Green buildings are amazing um, in terms of resources uses and creating a better and even cheaper through their lifetime um, use, use of, of, of finances. So here we see what are the barriers. So the barriers are, for example, uh, first of all, that the team should all work together. You have um, all these, the different players in a construction cycle, so the investor, uh, the architects, uh, local authorities, um, uh, manpower or people building the, the, the buildings, uh, the labor and, uh, and the skills they're required, innovation, marketing, all of these have to come together to be able to construct and operate a successful green building. Now, I've seen in my lifetime hundreds of amazing green buildings and each of these buildings you could pinpoint um, both the investor's uh, decision and, and rationale behind building a green building um, and they had to bring in the right skills from the design point of view. So not every architect can design uh, a green building. Uh, but once they've done a few, it gets much easier and they look at all the different aspects of, of as I said, of resource use and, and better microclimate and reducing the, the environmental uh, footprint. Marketing is quite an interesting topic. Um, quite often buildings, green buildings are constructed and they are wonderful, um, but the benefits aren't properly portrayed. So that's just another area which is, needs to be focused on to knock down these, these barriers. Green building is a global trend uh, throughout the whole planet. Every country in the world has uh, at least a few green buildings. Uh, some countries have more uh, than other ones. Uh, around the world at the moment, there are at least 3 million verified or certified uh, green buildings, um, which have had taken this complex approach to building in a different way. Uh, in Russia, uh, there are over a thousand green buildings which have been certified to different systems. Uh, they're spread across the whole, whole country. And um, green building is a very important element of strategies for sustainable development, both for cities, municipalities, citizens themselves, um, corporations. Um, it's often forgotten about uh, when companies are building their new, new buildings or looking for somewhere to, to um, new, new offices to, to, to rent, um, but it's a really key aspect. Why? Because of the knock-on effect of the amount of energy, the uh, ecological footprint, the CO2 uh, emissions, but also because of the health and productivity of the workers, um, which has a huge effect on the bottom line of a company. Uh, there are literally millions of solutions out there. Um, 
which can be used for green buildings. And uh, these solutions, as I've mentioned, a few of them are in the materials area and the um, ventilation area in the, the way that buildings are, are managed, that they are designed. There are literally millions of solutions uh, out there. So uh, one instrument which is really important in um, promoting green building and, and accelerating the trend towards green building are green building councils. These are associations, professional associations, uh, around the world, there are over 80 of such, such councils uh, in, in different countries. Um, what they do primarily, are they arrange events, promote green building, they build awareness, um, visits for green buildings, uh, and networking to bring all these various um, important people together to make, be able to make uh, green buildings. Green building councils also work on developing standards and verification methods to avoid greenwashing to move the science forward, to uh, actually use more of these technologies and solutions, uh, implement them and then to track how, how, how they work and how they work with each other, which is very important. Green building councils work together with developers and state institutions, with universities, with local planning authorities, um, to be able to, to, to build these wonderful buildings and then promote them and show what a success they were financially and for the people who are using the buildings. Uh, most green building councils also offer training courses um, to grow competency on, on the market. And in our parts of the world, there are green building councils in all of the BRICS countries, so in Brazil, Russia, India, China, and the Republic of South Africa. And in the CIS countries, many of them also have green building councils. So, green building is about creating a legacy together. Um, it's something which changes the world. It brings together like-minded people, innovators, people who are ready to stick their neck out and do something different, uh, take a risk, but then to um, find that they, they, they've, they've created something uh, better. In my 15 years, I've met many, many such people. Uh, these are all very adventurous people who are ready to try new things out, uh, studying new technologies. Um, as you know, in the construction area, in the construction field, uh, there's a lot of conservatism. Uh, most most uh, construction companies would rather build the same way they've built before to minimize risks. But in fact, risks are much higher for not building green buildings because the buildings will soon become uh, secondary to uh, greener and better uh, buildings. Um, such things as, as the Olympics, large sporting events, um, companies with their, with their strategies for green building uh, and individuals um, have made huge differences in green building. So very quickly to summarize what I've said in my presentation, uh, we're looking to build a better future. People spend 90% of their time indoors and the world's resources are really dwindling quickly where demand is, is growing and, and changing uh, every day. And green buildings can be built using less resources, offering more utility for the people who are using them and fit better with the demand uh, in society. Green building is a way to create better and cheaper buildings and, and, and cities, which are more competitive and productive. And the number of green buildings in, in Russia is growing quite quickly. And also globally, the community, the green building community of professionals is also growing quickly. The drivers for the industry are standards, green building councils, you know, awards, uh, the market, uh, which is demanding more green buildings. Innovation really is the key, building different buildings. Thank you very much for your time.